Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi there, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us for today's session. Um, I know there's quite a few of you joining us from the United States and the Canada and also uh, Central and South America all through the night. It's 2 a.m. here in San Diego. Um, and I believe it's about 10 a.m. where you are, John. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Just one minute past 10. Fantastic. So, so we're, for, we're, we're bright and early here. We're bright and early here. And we've got uh, a reasonable time for the rest of the world. We normally, uh, many of the times, are suiting um, the, uh, the America's uh, market more than the other rest of the world. But what we've done this year is tried to have as many sessions as possible throughout the day so that it benefits everybody. Um, in a variety of time zones. So I hope you're all appreciating that, those of you that aren't having to stay up through the night this time. Um, now, we have a fantastic session planned for you today. Before we do anything whatsoever, can I just ask that you put your hands up to let me know that you can hear me loud and clear and that there's no problems if you just put them up. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much, they've all gone. Brilliant. Okay, I'm gonna put your hands down, that's great. I can see that everyone's got their hands up. I'll put them down now. Super. Um, now, just a, a quick bit of housekeeping as always. Um, you should see in your chat box on the right hand side, there's a link to our Facebook group. Um, we love feedback and we'd love you to join our community. We're qu building quite a big tribe now, We've got about three and a half thousand, four thousand um, coaches that we're building there. And it's we're always going to be releasing some awesome content there. So please feel free to join that. That's facebook.com slash WBEX, which is W B E C S. Um, now, without further ado, um, I would like to introduce um, my very good friend, um, John Leary Joyce. Um, John is the founder and chief executive of the Academy of Executive Coaching. It's a multi-million dollar dynamic creative coach training company with a rapidly expanding international network of partners. Um, we've been working with John and the AOEC for many years. Um, and we've just been thrilled by the quality and the feedback that we get from all the coaches that are part of that organization. So um, now John grew up in a family business um, on leaving school, dabbed in, dabbled in a small business ventures before training in education and humanistic psychology. He became a practice partner in the London Personal Growth Center before taking over as managing director at the Gestalt Therapy Center London. He, growing, he grew the company fourfold in the 10 years he was there. He combines his psychology and business experience. He established an innovative Gestalt consultancy, training and coaching company, evolving into the AOEC or the Academy of Executive Coaching in the year 2000. With tens of thousands of practice hours, John has helped so many people find a more fulfilling life, both personally and professionally. He's a Quaker by spiritual belief, and his children and now grandchildren went through the Rudolf Steiner education system. Both of these structures support innovation and independent thinking and being, and we're going to be discussing some of these issues today. So it's my great pleasure to hand over to my good friend, John. Over to you, John. Thanks very much indeed, Ben. Um, it's great to, to chat to you and have you actually as a role model for innovation. I have been so impressed at uh, how you've created the WBEX organization and, and maybe someday we'll get you on an, uh, as a case study and, and I know the subject today is about innovation and how it's underpinned by structure and I know that your organization would not exist if it didn't have uh, a solid structure uh, behind it to support the innovation and of course I'm aware of all of that structure because I've been engaging with your people. Um, and listening to you uh, present my uh, potted history of my life takes me back to, to my roots, talking about my family, and especially growing up in the very painful conflict of Northern Ireland. So I'm sure most of you will guess uh, my accent. You know, a, you know, it's a, a people, um, my people, torn apart really through a rigidity, um, a lack of dialogue, a total inability to find creative solutions to differences. Now, you know, we were in the, the thick of it um, from, I was uh, in my early teens, my parents' business uh, was blown up twice. 
Uh, fortunately, no one was hurt, and they were able to repair it. But my grandparents' shop uh, was completely gutted. Um, and sadly, of course, this sort of action only hardens the rigidity and lack of openness to change. And I experienced that within my family and within the, the social fabric uh, of the country. And, you know, as, as I looked back, as I was planning this event and looking back on that, I can see that, that this part of my, uh, my adolescence was a major factor in entering education and humanistic psychology. I think there was some part of me who was desperately trying to find a way to help, help people, help my family communicate. And, and I had to leave Northern Ireland. I went to, to Scotland, to Glasgow, because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't really engage on a political or even a, a social level. And what has crystallized for me over the last couple of years is that I'm seeking to help individuals, teams, and organizations. And we're doing that using a structure. Now, there we go. Sorry, I have the slides move for me. Um, it's how do we use structure to liberate and not limit creativity and innovation? And this is really the theme that I want to be talking through today, using innovation in a structured way to give us the best results. Now, uh, I'm not a hugely creative person in an artistic way, but I'm endlessly fascinated by how things work, how to get quicker and more efficient ways of uh, getting great results. And I suspect I'm uh, like Ben in that respect, always looking, always searching. And I left university having studied psychology and education, you know, and I, and I found it a real struggle. I had a real difficulty with that structure, the institutional educational system. And I was lucky I got my first job uh, as a woodwork instructor in a residential school for disturbed, uh, glue-sniffing uh, adolescent boys. Um, and I got that job uh, on the back of three teachers having uh, resigned from the job um, in about 14 months. Uh, and so it made me think, what on earth were they doing? How come they couldn't stick uh, this job? And, and what I realized through uh, inquiring further is, they had quite rigid structures and beliefs about what woodwork was supposed to be. It was about making furniture. And what they couldn't do was adapt. They couldn't find the creativity to adjust to these aggressive, emotionally manic, depressive boys they were trying to teach. So I thought, OK, well, I've got to do something different. I actually was never trained as a woodwork teacher. So in a, in a way, that helped enormously because I had to do like we do in coaching, I had to really listen to what the, what were they wanting to do. And I scrapped the whole notion of making joints and, and furniture, and I got them carving. First of all, I got them carving bowls, and later I was encouraging them to, to copy the, the primitive uh, masks of Africa in order to find some way of expressing uh, how they felt. Um, Maybe uh, in the next, uh, when we get to the full webinar, I'll, I'll find a picture to show you uh, what we achieved. Um, but I was hugely inspired by the educational pioneer, Rudolf Steiner. And uh, Ben mentioned that, that I then later sent my children through that system because it's, it's a system that really does encourage you uh, to think and uh, to discover for yourself and find your own creativity. So looking back on that period uh, of working as a woodwork instructor, I would say I was coaching them, even though we're talking about 35 years ago when coaching wasn't you know, ever or thought of except outside sport. But now looking back, it was about coaching them to use wood as a creative medium uh, to produce some tangible objects that they could pr be proud of and in the process help them build confidence and a real sense of satisfaction in themselves. And 
those were three fantastic years. Um, and I only left because I met my soon-to-be wife, uh, and both she and I were involved in the uh, clinical psychology field, had done our training together, uh, and I moved to London uh, to be with her. Interesting enough, in the last five years, I found another a rich source to explore this dynamic interaction between structure and creativity, and that's tango. Now, I, I don't know whether we have anybody from Buenos Aires or uh, people around the world uh, who are uh, involved in tango. It's becoming a huge um, movement uh, now, and absolutely wonderful. But it's a dance uh, where each step is improvised, and that's important. Um, you, you, the, the dances you see on television are, are generally choreographed. Um, I'm sorry, I think there was something there about my webinar. <laughs> um, the, the, the dances is uh, generally choreographed. Sorry, I'm slightly concerned that I've lost you, Ben. Hello. We're still here. Hello. We're, we're absolutely I, fine, John. Carry on. Sorry. I've, I, I, it looks as if I've uh, have I lost my um, I've lost the screen. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Something in my Outlook folder. Would I see what? Okay, sorry. No problem. I mean, you, we we can uh, yeah. If you just there you go. That's perfect. We can see the screen perfectly now, John. Is it? So yeah, I'm on. Uh, yep. There we go. Apologies. Um, uh, technology isn't my strongest point. <laughs> um, so. Uh, the, the, the tango is um, just a wonderful medium. Each step is improvised uh, with your partner and in relation to the structure, the form of the dance, the music and the other dancers on the floor. And, and now actually I'm running uh, uh, workshops on leadership and followership using tango as a medium to experience how we need the combination. It's the combination of one foot that's solidly on the floor, grounded. You're grounded with one foot, and the other foot, the other leg, is free to move in order to be expressed. So again, this combination of solidity and freedom. So since I left Northern Ireland, I've spent uh, the last 40 years counseling, mentoring, coaching people of all ages to be creative in their lives, whether they're managing teams or running their businesses. Uh, and of course, I've been learning about my own limiting beliefs, how I restrict myself, finding new ways and approaches to face my challenges, finding innovative solutions to your problems, um, as I've grown and established uh, my own companies. Now, it's kind of interesting that this occurred somewhat last year when I was approached by an HRD uh, of a major bank to come up with a structure that would help him mobilize greater innov innovation in the organization. And this is that really was the catalyst uh, for uh, this whole notion of, of developing uh, innovation coaching. So this galvanized me into action to pull together all those years of experience and to create a coaching program for them that would serve these needs. And then, uh, coincidentally, Ben called me and asked me to join the WebEx team and share my latest thinking. Um, and so uh, today I, I offer for you um, this webinar, Creating Business Growth uh, Through Innovation uh, Coaching. And in the spirit of the topic, uh, I invited a young animator, Gemma Burnett, to help me develop and illustrate a storyline uh, based around a metaphor of innovation and organization being like uh, plants in a garden. So um, here, here is my sequence as I start. Uh, and my take on it is that being a manager is like being a gardener. You need to carefully uh, attend to the innovation, the plants that will bear fruit uh, in your garden. And if the garden the gardener is, is creating a healthy garden, then it, things will flourish. And in the main webinar, I'll take you through uh, the full story I've created uh, with Gemma. Gemma, sorry, Gemma. Um, but, but we have a look at what happens when we uh, neglect 
uh, the innovation. We cut R&D or learning and development budgets. We end up with our innovation being choked um, and wilted. Uh, and as we get caught up in the structure of the doing, what we're supposed to be doing, you know, and the consequences, well, you know, we, we start to eat into, we begin to lose the fruits of our um, innovation and uh, until there's a wake-up call, you know, there's a crisis and they're saying, you know, look, we're missing something. Uh, and what do we do? Our, our uh, objective then is to uh, do something about it, there we go, and actually uh, make a real difference to, to start uh, creating a space where we can um, really see those fruits of our efforts uh, uh, grow and develop. Now, um, we'll, uh, in the main webinar, we're going to look in, in much more depth at how we maintain this dynamic balance between innovation and structure in order to create this uh, healthy organization. And uh, the way I see it is that it's a, a balance here, as I'm saying, on the, on the one side, uh, the innovation, the, the, the growth, and on the other side, uh, the structure, you know, the solidity, the, the frameworks that we, we need to pay attention to. And we'll, we'll explore in more depth what happens when uh, one innovation, one part of the system takes priority. And we, we can see that, you know, in, in graphic detail in the dot-com bubble. You know, when we were rushing after all these fabulous ideas that these young people were creating, and we weren't paying attention to the structure of these companies, these organizations. Could they sustain this uh, level of, of creativity and imagination? And it gets out of kilter. And you could say that again about the banking collapse. We're looking at how um, those investment uh, managers were creating structures and, and very creative accounting practices, um, but, but we realize now that they didn't have the structure and the securities and the regulation to really actually contain them and make them work. And then, of course, we know that um, if you get uh, too much uh, structure, then you get the rigidity of the command and co control uh, management practice. Uh, with individuals, you get real attention to detail. You discover that leaders are unable to let go uh, and allow their teams to, to create new directions and, and new actions because they're trying to control and hold everything. And and this is interesting because I, it's a real, you know, with the, the rise of the neuroscience uh, stuff, we can see how our brains are structured uh, like this. That in, in actual fact, our right hemisphere is more uh, focused on this innovative creativity uh, and our right brain is uh, really focused on our uh, the structure and our um, um, uh, organization. So when we get uh, to the, um, the, the main webinar, we'll be drawing on, uh, I'll be talking about loads of examples. Um, I've got a wonderful coach, he um, made me smile when I was thinking about it. He, we, we talked about his uh, career progression and we talked about him uh, ditching his Vespa scooter attitude. Um, he was a, a bit of a biker and, and he, he felt he was pootling along on his Vespa. Um, and we looked at what would happen if he got onto a Suzuki 500. You know, what would happen to his career? What would he have to be? How would he have to function if he won uh, really uh, firing on all cylinders with all of the power that he had available? So we'll, we'll talk further about those sorts of uh, case examples. Um, but primarily the, um, the focus uh, of the, the main webinar will be explaining the step-by-step -step model uh, that I've evolved in response to this invitation to create it for the, the um, uh, local bank, um, and, and a model that I've uh, called CREATE. Um, yeah, very apt. Um, and CREATE, really, we, we look at the context. Uh, when, we're, when we're engaging, we need to understand where the innovation is happening, 
what's required, what's the contract, who's involved, what are the resources, the organizational strategy that would support it. So this is a key part uh, of any uh, innovative coaching practice. And then, of course, um, there is no point in, in engaging in some innovative venture unless you've got some idea of where you're going. What, what's the outcome that you're looking for, the results? How do you build on past successes uh, and failures? How do you learn from the results of the past and, and bring them forward? Uh, and how do we do the sort of risk management? How do we know um, uh, what, what we know and what we actually don't know? And then, of course, um, with any activity, with your coaching, with individuals, and uh, within the organizations, you're looking at the, the explore. The, and I'll talk a bit in a moment about the creative process that involves being able to um, engage in, in an innovative way uh, with your clients. And when we get to the uh, webinar, I'll take you through uh, an example of your own, uh, talk you through it so we can work through this model and uh, through the, the creative process in the exploration stage. And then the analysis. Um, this is very much the uh, sort of left brain activity, the thinking through, the pros and cons, you know, the risks, the consequences, you know, what works, you know, as opposed to the creative side, uh, the explore, which is very much the, the right side of the brain. Uh, and then, of course, once you've done your analysis, we, you know, we're, we're looking at what are you going to do? Uh, you know, coaching is all about where are you going to take this? So it requires the the trial, trial and error, the, the willingness to take the risks uh, to actually implement uh, the, um, extra, the, the innovation that you've been working on and, and to make the engagement. And then finally, um, any good project would have a period of review, um, assessing has it met the results that you've been looking for, how do you measure uh, against expectations. So this is basically the model. You'll see that these many of these elements um, are, are similar to many other models, like the GROW model, have the same sort of shape. Um, but again, this is focused to su support the, the, the focus more on, on innovation. And then uh, what I'll do, as I said, I'll, I'll take you through uh, an experience of using this model uh, in uh, and using the, the creative a process and again the, there's an acronym then for uh, how do we mobilize creativity in ourselves as a coach what m different medium styles metaphors brainstorming all of that great stuff that uh, awakens a different part of ourselves and then the R here is about being reflective we know from our uh, cold learning cycle that unless we uh, spend time reflecting on our concrete experiences, we really won't uh, embed the learning and take it to the next step. So the creative process requires periods uh, of reflection. And I know that for me, um, I do my, my most productive uh, reflection um, at kind of four in the morning uh, when I'm half asleep, uh, when my brain isn't we, my right brain isn't uh, fully engaged um, and I'm allowing ideas to, to percolate through and I have uh, generally have quite a delightful time in the morning exploring all the possibilities. And then of course something that's very important um, in terms of working with innovation is to allow emotions because we're talking about passion here. Uh, we're talking about awakening in people a desire to, to move, to, to get their energy moving. So we've got to uh, uh, engage uh, the emotional side of our being to understand our reactions uh, on our, and our desires. And advertisers know this very well. All adverts are geared towards uh, getting you uh, engaged in an emotional way in order uh, to buy. And then, of course, unless we are adventurous, unless we're willing to take risks, to step out, to break away from the usual norm, um, we won't uh, make any progress. It requires the courage to move forward into the unknown 
and to take the risks. And the, the T here is kind of interesting. I was struggling a little bit with my acronym because what I wanted to convey here was how we used our physical being. Um, because it's the way we move through the world. We see this with presenters. Now, unfortunately, you don't have a video uh, of me, but uh, you know, seeing how I move, the way I use my body, I'm, I'm moving my hands around <laughs> as I'm talking, um, and how important the way we engage, the way we touch each other, the way we feel, how we manage, for instance, our anxiety, how we manage our delight, how we express uh, our passion in our bodies. This is really important uh, to be uh, engaged and, and connected with in the creative process. And then the intuitive, the unknown. And uh, Ben talked about my, my Quaker uh, background. Um, those of you may be familiar, but, but Quakers uh, believe in uh, finding the spirit within. So it is a very much um, a reflective and to an extent intuitive, it's an experience of the mystery of the universe and allowing that um, the knowledge to come from somewhere else, whether you call it God or the ether or um, the, the spirit, you know, it, we need to access that. It's a way. It, it's a way of bypassing our our intellect and finding another part. Actually, sometimes within our bodies, and having that intuitive sense combined with that, the view, the vision of where we're going to understand what uh, might be over the horizon to, to open uh, their eyes um, to new possibilities. And, and we need that. Um, all uh, great leaders uh, create a compelling vision uh, and that has to a certain extent that level of, of we can create something, we can build something new, uh, a, a wonderful vision of the future. And then finally, um, how we use our energy, uh, our vitality, the, the spontaneity that we've got that comes through our intuition and vision and body and adventure, all of this combined into us. How do we use that? Are we allowing that expression? Are our managers allowing the energetic uh, engagement of their staff or are they, are they constraining it? Um, are they channeling the energy? Are they giving it focus, like I've been saying? Are they providing a structure that supports and contains um, that, uh, that great uh, energy and, and desire to move forward? And I believe that, that coaching in itself is one of the, the, the process of holding. We hold the space. We create a safe structure for our clients to delve in in all of these different ways to delve into themselves and find new ways of engaging so um, i hope uh, this taster webinar will awaken some of your creative juices um, both for you personally and to make you think about your own coaching uh, process uh, with your clients and uh, you'll come and join us uh, for the full webinar on the 27th of June at 8 o'clock. Uh, that's 8 o'clock uh, British summer time. So um, thank you very much for those who are in time zones that make this the middle of the night. I appreciate you joining us for that. Um, and of course, if you want to know anything more about me uh, or about Gemma, who helped to, to create the uh, animation, please go on to the, the WebEx uh, page here. and um, get more information and thank you very much for uh, listening in and Ben I don't know whether there's questions coming in or not whether we've time for it we've we're just uh, coming up to the half hour which I think was my limit um I think if it's hello. All right, John, hello can you hear me okay John yeah hello. I can hear you um I think we might have one or two questions if that's all right with you, Are you yeah okay that's great questions? that's great I'm just I'm just slightly concerned about the time. No, you 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 were per you could have been more perfect. I think you were about three seconds before the time was. I was. I mean, that's that's timing for you. So I, I think you do that every year. You seem to make exactly perfect timing. So uh, well played. 
Um, okay, if you have any questions um, for John, please, um, do you want to put them in the um, the right hand side uh, the, in the question box and I will take just um, one or two of them. Okay, um, we've got a question here. Um, can you uh, please, oh, this is a, a technical question. I'll, I will answer that um, in a bit more detail. Um, it's just asking, uh, please can you tell me about the recordings? I have to miss May the 20th and just hoping there will be recordings. Yes, there will be some recordings available and they are made available um, in the um, the attendees uh, of area. Um, I'm just looking to question there. Um, do we have any other questions coming through? I'm not seeing any questions come through so far. It might just be that we don't have that. Fantastic. And lots of great feedback. Fantastic intro. Thank you so much, John. This was excellent. Great session. Great introduction. Um, does anyone have any questions? Oh, um, that, that's brilliant. I've just answered everybody's questions. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Good, good, good work. There you go. Magic. Well, we'll, we'll have more questions at the end of the, uh, the full webinar when we get into the whole work a lot more and people get to explore their own experience of using uh, this structure. Thank you, John. Thank you. And I've got, I mean, I've got a lot of comments. Just, uh, John. Great session. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Um, okay, great. There's, there's some people trying to get in contact with you, John. So I'm going to, I'll send you through the details of uh, that. But uh, other than that, um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. And thank you so much. Um, for a great sec session, John. Um, it's uh, it's been a real real pleasure to have you once again, and I'm really really looking forward to um, your full session um, that you have coming up in June. And um, thank you. I will, um, yeah, thank you everyone for for joining us, and um, and, and thank you for your wonderful feedback as well. Oh, that's one thing. If you can post some as feedback on the Facebook wall, that would be very very much appreciated. Um, and there's a huge number of, of comments there. If you can post some of these on the Facebook, well, that's facebook.com slash WBECS. Um, that would be really, really much appreciated. So anyhow, without further ado, I'm going to call this session to an end. And um, John, thank you very much for, for the session again. I really, really thank much you. appreciate it. Thank you indeed for the platform. No problem, John. Take care, All everyone. Then. Thank you. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye.